Well, I finally made it back to camping. I have not been able to for a while, but I'll tell you, I'm actually camping where Tim Collins made a film one time not long ago when he come around uh, and come down the East Coast and then headed down the bottom part back across towards the West. And I think he went on down into Mexico just before the pandemic came. Well, he actually stayed at this spot down here in France Marin National Forest and uh, he didn't, he's even said on it, he didn't know exactly where he was, but there was actually a tree that was laying over here and I had camped in this spot over here like the week before he did the video and I saw the tree. So in the background, I could look through and see the picnic table over there and I, I knew that was the table because it had one of the seats missing. So uh, anyhow, I think he even gave how to change your oil when you're on the trip. And he did a good job because I actually came the next week after he made that, which made two weeks that I was gone. And um, and I think I stayed here that time, but he he didn't leave no oil on the ground, which I wasn't checking him out. All right, let me uh, turn you around and take you to the camp. I done came set up, went back to the grocery store, bought a pile of groceries, stayed uh, about three nights at the minimum. It's according to how I feel, I'd love to stay longer, you know. Well, I say you know, but you know how it is. This is a cheap box. I'll tell you what, you need to just go ahead and get a two box like a lot of those guys are doing because they'll take a lot more bad treatment. And uh, anyway, I bought some wraps and uh, I always do. <laughs> and if you look at my past videos, I've had like maybe what, <laughs> three times stolen? <laughs> by raccoons I'm sure and I always buy this I never eat nothing like this at home it's just that sometimes I want a snack and uh, and I don't eat many canned things but I don't want to pack a cooler <laughs> I haven't bought beanie weenies in years so I'm gonna give that a I wonder if they taste like they did when I was younger but anyway I bought a few things like this and I, when I went to California around, right now I'm on the East Coast, McClellanville, South Carolina. But when I went up and around by Montana and then back down through Salt Lake City and Utah and Nevada and all, I camped a lot. And I would, uh, I'd buy stuff like this. Um, I mean, I know it's high in salt, but uh, I'm not living like that forever, you know. But I mean, and I camped, I had a great time. I'm, I I mean, I'm trying to even remember some of the names of the places, and I camped out by streams and washed my clothes in them and rode with, and it was, they had an early snow last year up there around uh, Denver, Colorado and all, and uh, oh my God, that was so freaking cold. Those streams, you can't get in them. You can't get in them. All right, let me get some of this other stuff. Uh, well, maybe I weren't supposed to get this out, but I always have some of those. And I already got two gallons of water setting over here, but uh, it don't hurt to have another gallon. It's a uh, drinking water. They don't have running water here. I bought macaroni and cheese. And what I do is if I don't, and then I bought these here potatoes. It's instant mashed potatoes. You just add water. And uh, I didn't buy no olive oil this time. Oh, I must have bought two cans of that. I don't remember that. I must have walked down the same aisle twice forgot that I'd bought them my memory's not very good and I brought bought mixed fruit I take something like that back home if I don't eat it here and I always love these like a snack never I don't pig out on them at home but when I go to camping I buy them and then I have them when I carry them back home and then they sit there and 
and I'll put them, uh, I'll look on the bottom of the can and rotate them in the, in the uh, cabinet so that the ones that need to be ate first will be up at the front. I don't carry a cooler and I, I'm lucky guy because uh, when I was a kid, I was lucky. I got a car when I was 15. I got my license at 15. Two weeks after I got my permit, I had my driver's license. And so those boys that went where I went to school, you first thing you do is you'd take open the trunk, roll that carpet back, move that uh, like a cardboard thick disc, and uh, take the spare tire out, throw that not away, but you know throw it somewhere, and you'd just keep your beer uh, down there and put the top back on it and put the carpet back, and you know we drove to school and you had beer and. And I didn't get a good education because of that. But, you know, I think I did all right in life. I mean, I mean, my parents loved me and all, but when they divorced, I could kind of, I took advantage of it. And I don't think they knew it, but, you know, like I, I went and moved in with my dad when I was uh, just turning 13. And I told him that I would move in with him but I was one thing he needed to know. And he, what's that, son? And I said, I smoke. He said, does your mom know? And I knew he, him, him, dad and mother was not talking at the time. So I went ahead and told him a lie. And he said, well, if your mom knows you smoke, I, I guess it's all right then. But he was a smoker. So, I mean, I could smoke right in front of him. Real small kid. I was smoking Marlboros. He smoked Pall Malls with no field. I mean, camels with no filters. And he'd put his on one side to mantle, and I'd put mine on the other. And, and I know he didn't want me to, but he figured if Mom let me. So so I lied a lot. And Dad went to the liquor store back in those days. He went every day. And so at 16 years old, I just went. I always went with him. So when I, when I weren't with him, you know, and I had my license, um, I'd go to the liquor store and uh, walk in. And Mr. Booth, he knew me. And he knew dad real well. And so what I'd do is I'd buy the same kind my dad bought. Trying to pretend like I was buying it for my dad. Even though I might would have rather had a different kind. And I got a whole feeling Mr. Booth that ran that liquor store. He knew that I was drinking it. But he was making him a dollar. Because if I didn't get it from him I'd have went down to the goose lady. She'd sell it to anybody. You go there at night time. And uh, you can only buy, like, Lord Calvary, uh, Canadian Mist, and I don't remember what, vodka, just plain vodka, I believe it was. And you had to buy them little teeny liquor bottles that could slide right in your back pocket, but she'd make a, a good bit of money on it, sell it, like, twice as high. But that's enough about that. Um, I haven't eaten since I breakfast this morning. And I got to get some firewood. I've got camp set. I went to the grocery store. So I'm going to probably make some kind of small snack. Then I'm going to get in the woods and start bringing out wood. I don't chop the trees down. I just, uh, I walk through the woods and I look up and I see a tree that's dead. And I push it over. And, um, because it's completely dead. It's not, not a live tree just with the leaves off of it. It's easy to tell when they're dead. They got mushrooms growing on them. <laughs> and uh, I don't, I don't eat the mushrooms, but I sure burn them in the fire. Hey. I've done made a few trips. I got some way back over here and I'm stacking it here. I can lay it right here on the on the edge of this right here uh, bench. And uh, they're so rotten I can give them a little stomp and boom, they're gone. And a while ago when I was talking about carrying the beer to school and stuff, you know, I shouldn't have been doing it and I'm not bragging about it. It wasn't a great thing. But, uh, I also know that during them times, I stayed with a lot of people, a lot of different people, and I learned a lot, you know, I've stayed in places where everybody in the family took their baths in one tub of water, and being, I was like the newest person there, I was the last one, and 
you can't see the bottom in a white tub when you've got um, a grandma, a mom, a dad, a daughter, and three sons, and then me. And us boys was all running out in the fields and all and was dirty, you know, from running barefooted. So it was all the way up our legs, the dust and the dirt. So I'd wash my face in the sink. I mean, I had to get in the tub that was mandatory to take a bath. But you know what? It was good. I mean, it really was. And uh, I did get kicked out of school. I, or I don't know what was taught behind my back, but at 15 years old, I was out of school. And I went and got a job. And I think, I didn't know, but I found a job that was paying me. And uh, I don't know if there was anything to do back in those days with how many hours you could work a young person as long as they were 15 and up. But uh, all I know is the next day I know they were making me get dressed and I had to go back to school because they said that I was too young to quit school. But I did find a job, and I worked that job after school, and then when I turned 16. And so when I'm talking about my first car and things like that, yeah, my dad s sold me his car. It was only like four years old, good-looking car, Dodge Dart Sport. But I had to make payments on it, and I had to pay for my own insurance. Now when I got in so much trouble for cutting school and all that, they took it back from me. And uh, and gave me, my, not the insurance money, but the money I had paid on the car. They actually gave that back to me. And it added up to be a good bit. And I turned around and used that same money to buy the car straight out with cash. Uh, my mom had a friend. that They wouldn't sell me the car. So my mom had a friend to go up there and buy the car, but not sign the paperwork for with her name. Came up there and put it in my mom's name. But anyway, that's we've all had funny, weird things. It all worked out in the end, and I love everybody, not mad at anybody. Um, it's helped me have a, a, a decent life. I mean, there's a lot of things I wish I could change, but if I changed them, then I wouldn't be here right now. Who knows what I'd be doing. All right, y'all, I got to get back to getting some more firewood, They're dragging it out the woods. But I see where people's actually chopped a lot of trees down. So I don't chop the trees down. All I get is the trees that is so rotten that you can just push them over and they pop off because they're rotten. If I go to, even if it looks like a dead tree, and I push it back and forth a couple of times, you know, just push it this way and that way, and I don't hear it snapping off rotten, then I let it stand.